Beloved, welcome back. Let me show you one of my greatest treasures, an original US Forest Service Marsh stencil machine. I found this on eBay for a couple hundred bucks. It flew it all the way from Florida, and I have very much loved it. That's what how the government does the stencils. Uh, you've got uh, the stencil boards right here. This particular one, I think, is three quarter inch. This is half inch, but you can see how we stenciled the original case. So today, we're gonna finish up our two kerosene boxes by painting them a beautiful blue color and creating the official stencil for the deal. Goodness, this gives me the fizz. So a stencil machine has a whole bunch of dies and this, these are all the characters that we have access to. You simply turn the wheel to the number or the letter or the character that you want and then could chunk this big blue handle and it advances it and punches through. So the cards are special. Uh, they're made for, from, uh, you know, I don't know, kind of that water resistant material so that they don't fall apart with the paint. And then we'll use a die gun, a die roller uh, to put the stencil on. We're gonna do three lines on the kerosene, just like the original government issue one did. And we have these, uh, these little indexing marks here where we can kind of start at. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be centered. We, we, we've got more card than we have letters. Then you drop this, and now we start punching. Start with K. Do I know how to spell kerosene? <laughs> K. Ooh, pretty cool. That gives me the fizz. I'll tell you, gentlemen, if you uh, were able to pick one of these up like I did on eBay for a couple hundred bucks, you could set up at your local farmer's markets and stuff. Guys would love to have these things. Goodness, I fear my public school education is about to rear its ugly head. Here we go. Next, we need funnel, which has six characters. So we'll do our third line. So that's one, two, three. Indexing here at the start on this blue line here. Now we're just going to go... We're going to advance one time before we start. Is that what I figured, or two? Ugh. I do know funnel starts with an F. N, N, E, L. How'd we do? There it is. Shall we set up our paint station? Now, before you paint, beloved, determine which way does the wind blow. All right, so it's blowing where? Out of the, out of the south. We don't want to overspray equipment or houses or anything like that. So just make sure it goes in and then stay above wind. So you don't cover your clothing. You don't have to breathe it any more than possible. It's best not to paint in direct sunlight, but sometimes you don't always have a choice. I got some old hardboard here that I just use for spraying stuff. It's nice to keep this around the shop for this sort of thing. Gentlemen, I don't care what your best Hispanic friend tells you, you cannot get a proper paint job without removing hardware. Don't mask it off. Just take a moment and get it off. There's nothing like mounting clean, crisp hardware on a fresh painted surface. I'll tell you, working with quality tools, beloved, is one of the pleasures of life. Our brother in Christ, AVE, said it so perfectly. You can be in the bottom of a hole, the bottom of a mine somewhere, up to your waist in water, I'm paraphrasing here, half deep in minor urine, as he puts it, having the worst day of your life, but you grab a hold of that 82 snap-on ratchet, things just become a little bit better. I know I go on forever at nauseam about the little things, the details, but the details are what make snap-on tools so extraordinary. Look at this, a, a nice knurled area right there, so when you're doing light duty stuff, you can spin it, speeds your job up. If your fingers are greasy, you can get traction on it. You know, little things like that are the difference. Mark your lids, gentlemen. Make sure you don't get things mixed up. When things are handmade, you know, they, uh, I should make sure make their, their, uh, everything's a little bit different. You know, your holes, placement and all that, and it won't go back properly if you get these switched. We got a nice color, Rust-Oleum, gloss, brilliant blue. I like gloss, nice and shiny. It's gonna be hot today, gentlemen. I think it's gonna be close to 90, which is pretty hot in the Pacific Northwest. We're not used to that. To answer the age old question, how long should you shake a rattle can? Well, I didn't really know. My granddad always said about 30 seconds. And he actually, he used to, he was so frugal. He lived through the depression. When we had empty paint cans, he would take the, he'd split them open and get, there's a marble inside, a glass marble. He'd take the marble out and save them for me in a bowl, and I'd shoot them with my slingshots when I'd come over. 
That's a good granddad that does that. I went online, checked around, and I got anywhere from 15 seconds to two minutes. So just like anything on the internet, the truth is probably somewhere about in the middle. So I give it about 30 to 60 seconds. I think you should be good, especially if it's warm. The key to painting, gentlemen, is light coats. Two minimum, three's better. I know I get it. I'm a petulant child. I want to see the color on. I want to see it all quickly, but I'll back up a little bit. Not spreading very evenly but you're better off to be a little bit more patient and come back, it'll dry so much quicker. Nice applicator too. Boy, these applicators are getting good. Is that blue paint drifting right under my digger? <laughs> It'll be dry before it gets there. Hold that paint dries, I'll pick out rocks out of the ground. Every time I step on one, it hurts my feet. Maybe in 50 years, I'll have half of them gone. This will be the third coat. I waited about half hour between coats just until it's not sticky anymore. I think that should just about do it. A uh, little tip, when you're done with your spray can, turn it upside down and spray until the paint stops coming out. And what that will do, well, with normal cans, apparently the new cans paint upside down. Who knew? Well, that's very impressive. I've never seen that before. With the old ones, you can clear the nozzle that way, but these seem to work any direction. Modern miracles, huh? Gentlemen, shall we stencil? Goodness, it's the next day. I let these dry overnight. There is a foul wind from the west. We've got about a 700-acre fire just west of Fuji that uh, we're keeping an eye on. We might have to go up there and take a look at that this afternoon. But right now, let's do the stenciling. We're good and dry. You gotta be careful when you get a stencil machine. Uh, be like my Nana, she had, she got one of those labelers. <laughs> it wasn't six months and everything uh, in the house was essentially labeled. Uh, so I've had best luck. There's a bit of a learning curve in doing this. I just kind of guess. We're not building Steinways here. You know, you, you put the appropriate amount of effort in according to what it is you're making, right? If you're building a, uh, as I say, grand pianos, that needs to be a great effort. But this sort of thing, you know, it's uh, give it its due diligence. This is the cool, I had to get this. And when I bought, the, I bought the stencil machine on eBay, and I found out spray painting didn't work very good. This is the proper roller. Actually, uh, you're, if you, there's an ink you can get in different colors. I've got white, but the ink actually goes in the handle right there. I'd never seen one of these before. A very high quality item. Doesn't leak on your hands as long as you screw the cap in. Then there's a plunger and the plunger introduces paint into the roller. So I have found when you're first doing it is you want to make sure you saturate it. You get too much and, um, and it bleeds. It looks terrible like the first ones I did. So let's uh, We'll do our best here. Is that square? Kerosene and funnel. It seems to me that kind of going back and forth. Ooh, that looks good, huh, gentlemen? That looks good. Now here on the side. Oh, we're getting better, gentlemen. That ink actually dries pretty quickly, but we'll just alternate. Shall we do another one? This ponderosa pine is trying to brain me. It keeps dropping sticks and big cones on me. Should we do our hardware? Boy, it's always worth it. Always worth it to take the hardware off when you paint. You try to mask that stuff. It's it's not very skookum. What's also cool about this roller is it came with this cup. I've had this sit for six months and it doesn't go dry. It's pretty, pretty amazing. This is uh, something that you probably want to have in your kit. This is a uh, siphoning tube. It's got a marble inside and how you act, basically a check valve. If you ever need to siphon gas, you simply drop it in 
just make sure that the source is lower than the can than the level and then shake this and it'll start draining. Oh, of course. Of course. We must spill. It's just uh it's just my cross to bear. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, cannot, uh, I cannot handle or deal with any sort of uh, petroleum products without spilling at least 3% of it on every uh, transfer. Every transfer. Excellent. And of course, we'll do it up just like the, the original Forest Service one. It had a, a, a cleaning towel and a funnel in it. We can't get those copper ones anymore, but these are the... This is the new Coleman version. So each one will get its funnel. It just fits in there just nicely. And then uh, we'll cut up a rag here. It's a tough old rag. Properly made. Good grief. There you have it, gentlemen. Very ni nice compliment to the white gas. Now we'll have two forms of light for the old elk hunting camp series. Now we'll have to build one more box, a blue box for the kerosene lantern, uh, but that's pretty cool. Uh, kind of cool, just a, my take on the original box. Uh, and I, I like that old, that sort of thing. Next up, we're gonna have to look to either one of two things. Either we're gonna deal with our bedding. If we're gonna build a cot, if we're gonna sleep on the ground, determine that and our cooking, how we're gonna cook. It'd be nice to have a dual fuel cooking option, kerosene and gas as well. So I'm looking into that and that's probably where we'll move into the next episode. So thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers and we'll see you all on the next video.